In tonight's cover story, it's probably the most historic building in Chicago you've never seen. Mm. The oldest building in the Cook County Jail Complex, the notorious Division I. It once held Al Capone, hosted a blues legend, and housed the state's original electric chair. The century-old building is in disrepair. It is being demolished to make way for a recreational area. But before the bulldozers started, WGN's Mike Lowe went on one last tour, the last reporter ever inside the walls of the old jail. A lot of history in it. It's coming to an end. And it, if these walls could talk. This building been up since 1929. At 92 years old, they'd probably speak in a hoarse whisper. It's, it's relic. But the tale they'd tell would be much more colorful than the peeling beige paint that covers them. Cook County Jail Division One, the oldest building on a 96 acre campus that was once known as the largest concentration of inmates in the free world. It's a building that most of us have never seen, but many of us have probably imagined in our nightmares. All the lights are off, so we had to walk around with the trusty flashlight. We went on one last tour before the wrecking ball brings it down, led by jail executive director, Don Beecham. It's called a day room. So each, each tier has a day room. There were tables here, television was right up there. The complex is still one of the largest local jails in the country. But this building has been empty for nearly a decade. So let's say you were coming to visit, you would come through here after they buzz you in. It is sort of a crumbling cathedral of crime. The inmate would be on this side, the visitor would be on this side, and they would talk through it. This was one cell where we kept two people in. The original cells were uncomfortably close quarters. So now we'll take you through the insides of the cells. I mean, there's no room here. No room at all, no room at all. This, this would not survive uh, during the uh, social distancing days. And two people would be sleeping in here. Yes. So, I mean, you literally would just be lying next to somebody yes. on the floor. Yes, and you, so we're talking about like probably 1930, 1931. That was for typical corrections guests, but the most infamous inmate ever to walk these halls. All right, Mike, now we're gonna go in here to uh, A4, and rumor has it that, that Al Capone cell was in here. Had a much different experience. The FBI's permanent public enemy number one, Al Capone, had a cell that could house a dozen people. His security either slept there, and he slept here, or the security slept here, and he slept there. We don't know, but this is a really big sale. And like I said about the view, the view is there. Capone secured the luxury cell with bribes to the warden, including allowing him to be chauffeured in his fabled bulletproof Cadillac. He was booked into Division I on tax evasion charges on October 24th, 1931, until he was transferred to a federal prison a number of months later. The most ghoulish and ghastly room today resembles nothing more than an empty closet in the basement. There it is. Wow. We're standing in a place no one ever wants to be. Yes, here we are, the electric room. The electric chair was right here. There's the glass on the other side of the glass. That's where everyone watched it. Somewhere around here was the famous pulley. That lever was used 67 times at the jail. The state's last electrocution in the chair that jail staff referred to as Old Sparky was in August of 1962. It was a different system of levers and pulleys that controlled the dumb waiters. You see it up there, so they would put the food here and send the food up. But it was someone else who really controlled the distribution of dinners. Shot callers or barn bosses or the, the toughest guy that's here that would be the person to hand out the tray. And he would say, one, one dip, no lip. <laughs> that means you get one, I don't want to hear about don't it. Hear any and we didn't have any, anybody come and say, hey, I didn't get my tray. Around the corner, it was prayers, not arguments you'd hear from the inmates. This, this was the chapel area. They would come have service, the priest, pastor, they would come and they'll have service down in the basement. It's where the Reverend Consuela York, better known as Mother York, ministered to the inmates for more than 43 years, preaching the gospel of redemption. There was a fence around it to, to protect them, 
And back outside, there was one more piece of history. Well, actually, pieces of history now. This is the stage that B.B. King did the concert live at the Cook County Jail. All the inmates would be lined up, seated outside, and the concert was held right here on this stage. It's a beautiful day in Chicago. On September 10th, 1970. Would you please come forth, Mr. King? B.B. King performed a concert and the recording called Live in Cook County Jail became one of the most significant blues albums of all time, even helping inspire criminal justice reform. Every day I have the blues. And back inside, we took one last trip down the dark hallways of history, the last reporter and photographer inside the jail before the demolition started. The walls are now coming down and they can no longer talk. But long after the building is gone, its spirit just may continue to echo with the sounds of Chicago history. At Cook County Jail, Mike Lowe, WGN News. <laughs>